So if you've just minimized your bank account by nearly two grand when you picked up the Google Pixel Fold, you probably want to maximize its performance and efficiency and googliness. Nothing funny, googliness. On day one, so that you can get your money's worth and that's what I'm here to help you do. So let's kick this off with some basic tips and tricks and then we'll get into some ninja tricks that not everybody knows about. And I do have a screen protector and case recommendation for you guys to so stick around for that. So the first thing that I always do on an Android phone is change the wallpaper and change the grid. And it's really easy to do. All you need to do is tap and hold anywhere on an empty part of the screen, go to wallpaper and style. And then here you can choose from the default wallpapers and some of the Google ones are actually really cool. So if you go change wallpaper here, you'll see there's this section, Living Universe. These are animated ones which you can download onto the phone. These are awesome and they're designed to work well with this particular phone. But me personally, I like to use my own collection of wallpapers. Just make sure you position them how you want them to be. And if you are using your own wallpaper, make sure it's wide enough for the big screen and then you can set it as home screen and lock screen or just lock screen. And my advice to you when it comes to choosing a wallpaper is try and go for a darker one, not just because of the power saving benefits, but also because it helps the apps stand out from the background. If you go with a very bright background, these white apps might sort of get washed away in that brightness. And if you guys like the look of my wallpaper here, I have a whole stash of them. Just hit me up a little DM on Twitter and I'll send you that exclusive link to my private stash. Now the grid is a must change in my opinion, especially on this device, the Fold, because it's quite a bit wider than every other Fold that I've used before, which means you've got more space on the horizontal rows. And unless you have giant fingers and thumbs, you're probably gonna want more than four apps on those rows. Again, to change this, all you do is hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen, go to wallpaper and style, scroll to the bottom and go to app grid. So by default, it's on the four by four, I believe. I like to maximize the space and change it to five by five. That way I can fit more apps in one place on each screen, just making use of that space a little more efficiently. And the third thing that I normally do with a new device is set up some widgets. And it's definitely something I recommend you do on the fold because you've got this massive screen real estate, you might as well use it and have your most useful widgets on display. Once again, all you need to do to add a widget is hold your finger down on an empty bit of the screen. This time we're gonna to go to widgets and here you can see all of the widgets that are available. There's some really useful ones here, like the battery widget. So if you have the Pixel Buds, you can display the battery of those on the home screen. The clock widget is usually the first one I add. I really like these Google clocks. Check this out. You can choose one of the styles drag it to where you want it to be. And then you can actually customize the clock even further. And you'll notice the color of the clock matches my wallpaper because the entire theme is based around the colors of the wallpaper that you choose. So if you hold your finger down again, you'll see if you go to wallpaper and style, you can actually change the colors here manually if you want to. But right now I'm sticking with the tones to match the background that I've chosen. And one very useful widget to add is this one here, the Android system intelligence widget. When you expand that, you'll see this, the now playing history. Add this to your home screen somewhere and we're gonna come back to this a little later on in the video. Now, something you need to know about widgets is the top row here on the main home screen is reserved for Google's exclusive at a glance feature. So you can't place a widget right at the top of the home screen, you can on the other ones. And this takes me nicely onto the next tip. On day one, you should customize the first two pages of your folded screen with your unfolded screen in mind, because the first two pages will be reflected exactly as they are on the big screen. So just remember that when you're placing apps and widgets, so one and two, then three and four, and be mindful of how they will look when you open up the screen. So even though I'm really well versed and kind of immersed in tech on a day-to-day -day basis, I only recently have started leaving the house knowingly leaving my bank cards behind because my confidence in Google Pay has peaked and it's so good now, it's very reliable. And I recommend you start using it too, or at least set it up as a backup for those times when you forget your wallet. So to do this, find the wallet app, open this up, go through the steps, set up all your bank cards and your loyalty cards, and you can even add boarding cards to this if you're going abroad on holiday, whatever. Get it all set up on day one. And once you've done that, do this. Go into settings, Go to display, go to lock screen, and enable this setting, allow access to wallet from lock screen. 
So now from the lock screen, you'll see the wallet icon in the bottom right corner. And if you tap that, the card pops up and your fingerprint activates it for quick payment. It cannot be used like this. You have to authenticate it first. So don't worry about people using your bank card without your permission. I highly recommend you set this up. And as a matter of fact, it's probably more secure than carrying around a bank card with a CVV code on the back. Because if you lose that, someone could go online and buy something, but they can't do it with this. Plus it saves time. And as you know, nobody can give you your time back. And a little side note for you guys, if you are following along with this video, add the settings to your home screen just temporarily until you've got your phone set up and then you can get rid of that, hide it away. It's just gonna save time for you guys. Okay, so that's some of the basic housekeeping stuff out of the way. Now let's dive a little deeper into the settings menus and uncover some hidden gems like this one. Go into settings, scroll down to system, go to gestures. Now, did you know that there's a hidden button on the back of the pixel? No, that's because there isn't, but there is sensors inside that can detect a back tap. And to unlock this feature, just enable this quick tap to start actions. And I have tried this and I do recommend you scroll to the bottom of this page here once you've enabled it and switch on require stronger taps because if you don't do this, it will go off accidentally quite often. And trust me, that's really annoying. And you can use any of these presets here, but what I like to do is actually set up the wallet because I've set up a quick way to access the wallet when the screen is locked but this is a quick way to do it when it's unlocked. And just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be the wallet. It can be pretty much anything you want it to be. So you do you and set up whatever will be most useful for you on a daily basis. So I stopped caring about ringtones a long time ago because 95% of the time my phone is on vibrate and that's good enough for me. But there have been times when I've missed calls because of this. So if you're like me and you use vibrate most of the time, you're gonna love this one. Go to settings. Go to sound and vibration, then vibration and haptics. And you'll see this setting, vibrate first, then ring gradually. This is a game changer for me and I do think this should be the default, but I guess some people will just want ring tones, but I personally find them quite startling. <laughs> so this is what I use. Enable vibrate first, then gradually ring. So now you won't jump out of your skin when your phone rings. And if it's in your pocket and you don't feel the vibes, then you still might hear them. So it's a win-win. So we know Prince Harry and Meghan Markle care about their privacy. The question is, do you? I'm assuming you do. So I recommend you set this one up on day one. Go to settings, security and privacy. Scroll to the bottom of this page and more privacy. And the top setting here, notifications on lock screen. Now by default, this is on show all notification content. This means if you receive a message and it's a private message and your phone happens to be facing up on the dinner table or something, everybody will be able to read it unless you do this. Show sensitive content only when unlocked. Highly recommend you do this if you care about privacy. So here's a question for you. Have you ever received the phone call and immediately regretted picking it up? Well, if the answer is yes, then this is one of the best features that I'm gonna show you in this entire video. It is called call screening. And in order to enable this, you have to open the phone app. And because this is a new phone, it's actually even prompting me to set it up and even do a demo straight away. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do it if that doesn't pop up. Hit the three dots in the top right corner, go to settings. And at the top here, you'll have an option to download the software which runs on the device every time someone phones you. And this is how it works. Instead of swiping to answer the call, you just tap screen the call. And then what will happen is the person on the other side will get an automated message telling them to leave a voice message. And that voice message will be transcribed in real time on your phone. So you'll be able to see what they're saying to the call screening service. And then you can make an educated decision as to whether it's worth picking up that call. Honestly, this is one of the most useful features that I've seen on this device. It's brilliant, it works fantastically well, and you'll never have to worry about those spam callers or people trying to sell you stuff again, because you'll see them coming from a mile away. Now, remember when I said page one and two and three and four are reflected perfectly on the inside when you open the screen? There is one difference that you'll notice, and that's the apps that are always at the bottom of the device. If you maxed out the grid like I did, you'll have five apps running across the bottom of the folded screen. When unfolded, you'll have six. So this means you can pin an additional 
app there. And you'll notice this app looks very different from the others. And that's because I didn't assign a fifth app on the folded screen and I haven't assigned one here. So now this particular space on this kind of taskbar is a dynamic icon and it's an app suggestion icon. The phone will use AI to try and guess what app you want it to be. And it's actually very good at doing that. Now it's important you know the basics of the big screen. And if you open up backgrounding on the unfolded screen, you'll see you have a bunch of tools here to play with. And when you tap the split screen tool, you can split the screen between two apps. Now what you can do here is hit the line in the middle and drag either one of the apps to two thirds of the screen and the other one to one third and vice versa. And if you wanna get rid of one app altogether, you can literally just swipe it right across and there we go. And something else you can do here is if you double tap that line in the middle, it flips the apps around. And of course, do remember, you can turn the tablet this way around as well if it works better for you. And you might notice when you open some apps on this phone that they're not optimized for the widescreen. And you might be thinking, well, this doesn't look great. What you can do here is tap an empty side of the screen to drag it to one side or the other. But what you can also do, and never forget this, if you want this app to take up more of the big screen, you can always rotate it. And there we go, it expands it. Have you ever wanted to save an image that you found online, but when you've held your finger on it, downloaded it, you found out that the format that it downloaded in is useless? Well, the Pixel phones have a perfect tool to solve this problem. Open an app that you wanna grab the image from, swipe up for your backgrounding like before, and you'll see those tools that I mentioned earlier. This time, you'll see a little gallery icon pop up over the image. Now, if you tap that icon, that grabs just that image on its own and nothing else. You can hit save, share, copy, or even Google Lens and hit save. That now saves it to my Google Photos. And I have that image from that website, from that app, from wherever it was here on my phone. And this could be a great way for you to find a new wallpaper for your device, free of charge. But you're welcome to leave a super thanks tip if you want to, there's a button below this video. Have you ever heard that saying, your mind, your memory is like an attic. Sometimes it gets full and you need to get rid of some old information to make room for new, more useful stuff. Well, your Google Pixels memory is similar in that way. And there's a nice addition to the notification shade that tells you exactly how many apps are still running actively in the background. So instead of opening your backgrounding and then swiping away apps one by one, this is a much more effective way of finding out what is using most of your phone's resources. Just swipe down from the top and you'll see this section here. Right now, there's one app active in the background. And if I tap this, I can see what that app is. So do make a mental note of where this tool is because if your phone ever feels like it's starting to run slow, it might be because there's an app that's redlining the resources in the background and you can find it here and put a stop to it. Did you know you can control your Google Pixel phone with just your voice without having to summon Google every time with the Hey Google command? Well, you can do it with voice access and you can pretty much do anything with this feature once you learn how to use it properly. And there is a full tutorial once you set it up. So I'm not gonna go into depth on how to do it all. I'm just gonna show you how to turn it on. I'm gonna show you the door. It's up to you whether you want to walk through it. Go to settings, go to accessibility, and go to voice access. And from here, you can enable voice access. And you can also add the voice access shortcut to the home screen and it will live permanently here. So you can toggle it on and off whenever you want. When you activate it, this little blue bubble will pop up here. And when you tap that, now you can speak to the phone and tell it to do anything you want it to do. Although it won't recognize this kind of stuff. Open Google, but it does recognize simple commands like this. And if you want to know what else it can do, you could say, what can I say? And there we go. You get a list of commands and there's even an option to go more and learn all of the basic navigation, the gestures, the grid selection, all this stuff can be done without using your hands. And one day you'll be able to do this kind of stuff without even using your voice. Now listen here carefully. The speakers on the Google Pixel Fold are really nice. They're really loud. They've got a good amount of depth to them, 
but they can sound a little bit better, which could be useful for when watching movies or listening to music when you've forgotten your headphones. And to enable this, go to settings, sound and vibration, and spatial audio. By default, wired headphones will already be enabled with this feature, but you can enable spatial audio for the phone speakers. Now I have tested this with actual spatial audio tracks, and it is a little bit of an improvement. It's not massively different, but I do believe it's a little bit better. So I suggest you test it out, see if you can notice the difference, and if you prefer it, then just leave it on. One good thing about music is when it hits, you feel no pain unless you heard a track and you really liked it, but you had no idea what it was called. And because no one around you knew what it was called either, it's gone forever. If that's ever happened to you, that can be painful. Well, this great pixel feature is the solution to that problem. Check this out, go to settings. This time, I'm just gonna use the search bar and type in now playing. And you'll see it pop up at the top under settings services. Enable this feature, scroll down and enable show search button on lock screen. Now, the first time you use this, it would download a database that works locally on the device and auto detects tracks, even if you don't have Wi-Fi or data. And when you enable the show search button on lock screen, if the phone's database doesn't auto recognize the track that's playing, what you can now do is tap this icon and that will tell the phone to search through Google's online database to find what track it is. And it's really fast. And when you do a search like that, if you really, really like that track that you just discovered, on the lock screen, if you hit the little musical note, you can save that track's details to your favorites in your now playing list. Now, remember that widget that I told you to add to your home screen somewhere? When you go to it, you can bring up all of the now playing tracks that you've saved, and you even have your favorites list here as well. And if you tap one of the tracks, you can then open that track in one of your streaming services. It's a brilliant feature and I definitely recommend you set it up on day one. So if you're watching this on your brand new Google Pixel phone, the device memory shouldn't be a problem for you right now, but if it's something that's gonna bother you in the future and something you're always mindful of, this should help put your mind at ease. Go to your Google Files app. Within the Google Files app, hit the burger menu top left corner, go to your settings. And here you can enable smart storage. This will delete photos and video files stored locally on your device after they've been backed up for more than 60 days. And this works seamlessly in the background, so there's no need to worry about it. You don't have to do anything. It will do everything for you and you'll have more space and you'll always have a backup in the cloud. Okay, let's get into some privacy life hacks that not many people know about. So this one's a little bit trickier to set up but do remember, you only have to do it once and then you never have to do it again. So bring up your app drawer. Once again, we're gonna to go to the Google Files app, scroll down, and you will see this icon here, Safe Folder. Now, when you tap this for the first time, you'll be prompted to create a pin number. Make sure it's a memorable pin number, one that you're never gonna forget. Now, once you've done that, you can move more sensitive files, folders, photos, videos to the Safe Folder, which can only be unlocked by you with that pin code. To do this, choose the file you want to move to the locked folder, hit the three dots at the side of it, move to safe folder here. It'll ask you for your pin number, hit next. The file is now locked away, safe and sound in the safe folder. Okay, so here's a ninja tip, and there are various use cases for this one, but here's how you do it. Swipe down from the top, swipe down again, and hit the little pen icon here next to your quick settings. Now, scroll down, these are quick settings that are not yet added to the quick settings menu. Find this one, sound amplifier. Drag this up and place it somewhere in your quick settings. Now connect a pair of earbuds and this will also work with headphones that have microphones. Go to the sound amplifier in your quick settings menu and you can calibrate the sound pickup specifically for your ears so you can hear things more clearly. This feature was designed for people who struggle with their hearing, but it conveniently doubles up as a sneaky spy listening device. So if you just happen to accidentally leave one of your earbuds or your phone somewhere, depending on the setting you choose here, you could listen in remotely. 
But do proceed with caution. The Google Pixel Fold uses Google's own Tensor G2 chip and that provides speed, which is good. But what good is speed if you don't have power? And there are various things you can do to slow down the power drain on this phone. For example, you could enable the dark mode. You could even go into the screen refresh rate and set that to 60 instead of 120 hertz. But more important than either of those is your battery health. It's a good idea that you protect your power supply. And here's how you do it. Go to settings, go to battery, go to adaptive preferences. And here, double check and make sure adaptive charging and adaptive battery is on. And if you don't care about gaming or any really heavy apps, then I'd recommend you leave these both on all the time from day one. People often forget the importance of getting a good night's sleep and phones are often the reason why they don't. But this phone right here may be able to help you with your sleep and turn what I just said on its head. To do it, go to settings. Go to digital well-being and parental controls. Go to bedtime mode. Now just follow the steps to set it up properly for you specifically. Once it's set up between your bedtime hours, your Pixel phone will use its sensors to detect how well you're sleeping and it will provide you with the data to make sure you're recharging your batteries properly every night. And when I say batteries, I'm not talking about the phone or actual batteries. You know what I mean. And if you want to become a beta tester for future features within the digital wellbeing app, just tap the three dots in the top right corner and go to beta program. And here's a quick setting to help you be less distracted. Go to settings. Go to notifications. Scroll to the bottom and enable allow notification snoozing. Because when you snooze distracting apps, you lose less concentration. And just so you know what it looks like, it's this little icon here, the little alarm clock with the Z inside. If you tap that, you get a couple of options. You can switch it between 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or two hours. And here's another quick one. Go to settings, go to the search bar at the top, type in flip to shh. When you enable this, whenever you flip your phone face down on the table, you'll feel a little vibration indicating that it's kicked in and this puts the phone into do not disturb mode. So next time someone annoying calls you and you don't even want to call screen them because you know it's just going to be a waste of time, you can just flip the screen down, let them talk to the table. So thank you for making it this far into the video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've learned something so far. I do have a couple of camera tricks for you. You might be wondering, why I haven't showed you any camera stuff so far, considering that the cameras are one of the strongest attributes of this phone. I'll explain why that is in a moment, but let me show you those screen protectors that I told you about earlier. This is my first recommendation. This is the more affordable one. It's the easy dome glass. You get two in the pack. It's very easy to attach. Great clarity, it doesn't affect the fingerprint reader. 9H scratch resistant, high touch sensitivity, and there is a setting within the Google Pixel that turns up the sensitivity even more if you're using thick screen protectors, but this one should be fine. It is a tempered glass, and there is a kind of mount that locks onto the phone so that you line this up absolutely perfectly when you apply it to the device. Now, if you're not familiar with Whitestone Dome, they're a Korean company and they make really premium products. And this case is the Escudo case. It's a premium hybrid device protector. It's got a back and a front and it's also got a kickstand. It's a very rugged case. And it's even got a visor for the cover screen. So literally every angle of this phone, including the hinge, is completely protected. Okay, so this is the big one from Whitestone Dome. I've been using Whitestone Dome for more than five years now, so I really like what they do, and I know their products are nice and premium. This one comes with two glass for the outside, premium EPU film for the inner display, and two lens protectors. And if you wanna pick up any of these, check out the link in the description. And I just wanna say this video is not sponsored. I actually genuinely really like these products, and it's very easy for me to recommend them. So definitely check out the prices. Use the link below if you want to check out what deals are running. Okay, those camera tricks that I mentioned earlier. Open your camera app, go to the top left corner, drop down menu, go to more settings here, scroll down to frequent faces and enable this feature. What this will do is optimize the skin tones of the people you frequently take pictures of. When you enable this, trust me, your friends and family will appreciate your photography skills a little bit more than they do right now. 
because this will make them look better. It's not on by default and it is a little bit tricky to find. So definitely enable this now and let your pixel fold do all of the hard work when it comes to nailing better photos and better skin tones. Okay, so one of the huge advantages of having a foldable screen is the fact that you can use the primary cameras to take selfies and use the cover screen as a viewfinder. And trust me, your selfie game is about to level up if you've never had a fold or flip phone before. To use this feature, open your camera. See this little icon in the bottom right corner here? That activates the cover screen. And there is a feature on the Pixel device called palm shutter where you show the camera your palm and it will start the countdown to take a photo. And now the reason why I decided only to add two camera tips to this list is because on the screen right now and pinned in the top comment below this video is my dedicated Google Pixel camera guide. So if you really wanna master your Pixel's camera, then you definitely need to check that out. And if any of the tips and tricks in this video helped you in any way at all, a little subscribe, little thumbs up, won't cost you a penny, but it's incredibly valuable to me. So I would appreciate that. And if you just did that, I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.